Reverie by Ray. I was just. I was. Hello, everybody. It's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my November 2020 wrap up part one. I read a total of 20 books this month, so I'm going to be splitting it up into four different parts. So these are the first five that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I'm going to talk about in my wrap up is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. I was really excited for this book because Marissa Meyer is one of my favorite authors in the entire world. This is her first contemporary novel. So I was very excited to see how her writing style changed in this genre, but I was extremely disappointed and ended up giving it 2.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows a chronic overachiever named Prudence who gets assigned a irresponsible boy named Quint as her lab partner for the year. After receiving a less than satisfactory grade in their final science project, Prue is very disappointed and is hoping that Quint serves a little karmic justice. When she attends a karaoke night with some of her friends, she ends up tripping and falling and hitting her head, which gives her the ability to serve karmic justice herself. While this is happening, she needs to convince Quint to redo the project with her during the summer in order for a better grade, and it's like the story of that. Like I said, I was was very disappointed in this book. I had such high hopes for it and I don't know if that's like where the downfall happened but I just was not a fan of Prudence at all. I found her very annoying and self-centered. I was initially really excited because it was an enemies to lovers which is one of my favorite tropes in the entire world but I was not a fan of the romance between Quint and Prue in any way. I don't know if that's just because I don't like Prue so much and it just kind of put a hinder on the whole thing for me or what but not a fan. It didn't work in my opinion. I did really like Prue's twin brother Jude and their friend Ari. I think that their relationship with Prue was really great. I also really liked the ocean animals and that whole side of the story. I think that it brought some very cute interactions with Prue and Quint. The whole idea of the karmic justice was a cool idea but I don't think it was executed very well and it just was not as big a part of the story as I thought it was going to be. It was just very weak. So unfortunately I was not the biggest fan of this book which is very disappointing to me but maybe other people will like it. I don't know. It just was not my cup of tea. The next book I read was Sasha Masha. This is by Agnes Bronski and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It is a very, very short book about a boy named Alex who feels that he is not in the correct body. He begins a journey of his gender identity and self-discovery and determines that he thinks that his name is actually Sasha Masha and it's like the story of that. I think that this book is going to be very important for people in the queer community who are still questioning. I also think it's a very important book because it's an own voices book by a trans author. I also really liked the support system that Sasha Masha ends up creating for themselves in the queer community. Unfortunately, I never really connected to his character and I think that that is because the story was so short. The audiobook was three hours long and there wasn't that much plot to the book. It was more of a look at the inner struggle and inner dialogue that Sasha Masha was going through during their discovery, so I don't know if I just wasn't fully invested in the story, but like I said, I just couldn't connect. But overall, it was a very quick read. I finished it in like two hours because I listened to audiobooks very quickly, but yeah, I think that it's going to be important for a lot of people to read the book, so I definitely do recommend it if you are questioning. Your identity. The next book I have is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This story is about a wife who has a husband who also has two other wives. She doesn't know anything about the other wives but she's okay with this arrangement because she loves her husband so much and just wants to please him. One day while doing laundry she discovers an appointment slip in his jacket pocket for a woman named Hannah. So she concludes that this must be one of the other wives' names. So she decides that she is going to befriend Hannah in order to learn more about her. 
They become friends and then she notices a bruise on Hannah's arm which makes her think that Seth must be hitting her. This picture of her husband does not add up to the Seth that she knows so she must decide what she's going to do with this information and it's the story of that. Right from the beginning of this book I was hooked but I do think that the first half was a lot better than the second half where it all went downhill in my opinion. The writing style was very fast-paced and addictive. I was so invested in this woman and her story and I needed to know more about the other wives. It just kind of blew my mind that somebody would agree to the arrangement that she found herself in, only having one night a week with her husband while she knew he was off with two other women for the rest of the week. I think that the biggest downfall for the book was the predictability. It was very obvious how it was going to play out, which was a little bit disappointing. I also found the ending and the whole like giant plot twist to be very problematic in a lot of ways. I just don't think that the book handled mental illness very well and that definitely brought the enjoyment down for me. Overall, I do think that it was a very addictive and a fun read, but I think that the ending should have been done differently. So, 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Reverie by Ryan LaSala, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Kane Montgomery, who after an amnesia-causing accident is trying to piece his life together. When three strangers claim to be his friend, he finds himself in a reverie, which is a dreamlike world created by people who are struggling with the real world. So it is up to Kane and the others, who are the only people able to stay lucid during these reveries to unravel them before they implode and damage the minds of the people creating the reveries beyond repair. I was very intrigued by the reveries. I think that they were very creative and it was very interesting to see how all the characters interacted with the reveries. I think it was interesting how every reverie was different from one another and had their own set of rules. I know that a lot of people found that to be a little bit confusing, but for me it just worked. I think that the book has good queer representation and I really liked the discussions about being outed as gay in a small community. I think that Kane's story and inner monologues on the this topic are going to help a lot of teenagers and be very relatable to them. I liked the others for the most part. I think that Kane was a very interesting character. I liked trying to piece together the bits and pieces of information that we got from his life and him trying to remember everything before the accident. I liked trying to figure out who he could trust and who he couldn't trust. I think at times he drove me a little bit crazy because of the way he would react to certain things that he was told by his friends, but it is pretty understandable when you're trying to figure figure out things when you've lost your memories is probably a little frustrating, so give him some slack, I guess. I also really liked the relationship in the story, which I can't talk about too much due to spoilers, but just know that it is pure and soft and I was rooting for it. I also really liked the sibling relationship between Sophia and Kane, and it was frustrating to watch their miscommunication sometimes because you could tell that they truly cared for one another and just wanted to protect each other. I also really liked how each member of the others was dealing with their own insecurities and problems, but they were able to work through it with the help of everyone else in the group. I think that my favorite person from the group was Adeline, and I absolutely love who she ends up with at the end of the book. I'm also a huge fan of drag queens. If you've been on this channel for a long time, you know that I have an obsession, so I was the biggest fan of Posey. I just loved how power-hungry and sassy she was. I wish that she was on the page more and that there was more banter between her and the other characters because I loved every scene she was in. I think that the biggest downfall for me was the ending. I don't know what it was about it, but I just wanted more. It just felt very unsatisfactory to me. But overall, I think that it was a very creative story and I hope that more people give it a chance because I am definitely intrigued in this author's writing and I'm going to be checking out more from them in the future. And then the final book I'm going to talk about in this part of the wrap-up is Akita Witch. This is by Nendi Okor 4 and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows 12-year-old Sunny who is an albino Nigerian girl who used to live in New York but has moved back to Nigeria. Due to her difference in appearance, she has a bit of trouble fitting in. That is until she discovers she is a free agent, which means that she has latent magical abilities. She finds herself part of a four-student magical group who are being tasked with stopping a serial killer who is targeting young children, and it's like the story of that. This was a really interesting story. I liked the idea of the leopard people living in close proximity with the lambs, who are regular people. I really liked Orlu 
Lulu, Chi Chi, and Sasha, the other members of the magical group, I think that they each brought something unique and different to the story. I really liked learning about each of their individual magical abilities. I really liked watching the different relationships between the four of them grow as the story progressed. I also really liked watching Sunny learn more about her magical ability. It was really interesting to watch Sunny learn more about her magical ability and what this new world entailed to her. I do think that the beginning of the story was very slow and I found myself to be very bored while reading, but it is understandable because there is a lot of explanation needed for this story and magic system to make sense. I also just felt like some scenes were irrelevant to the overall impact of the story and could have been left out, which probably would have picked the pace up a little bit more. Overall I think that it was interesting and I will be continuing on with this series because I already own the second book and I am intrigued with these characters and I want to know what happens next with them so yeah three out of five stars. Alright everybody so that was the first five books that I read in November. Like I said this is going to be split up into four different parts so stay tuned for those next three parts. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!